Channel R presents Discover Spotlight, our exclusive series of interviews with the best up and coming artists. Hey, this is Tara from Channel R Discover Spotlight. Today I'll be speaking to one of Scotland's finest artists, singer songwriter Scott McWatt, about his new single, Summertime Soul. I want that feeling fine, take your time, sipping on the sweetest wine, oh, my summertime soul, I want that flying soon, honeymoon, I'll be Johnny, you'll be June, oh, that's my summertime soul. I really do like your, uh, your music, you're more country, aren't you? Um, everybody seems to sort of say that, I've never actually... Um, viewed myself as a, a sort of country-esque artist, but I suppose it's, it's just sort of a gradual thing that's happened subconsciously. So, but yeah, I, I, I love country music, I just never viewed myself as a country artist. But you've just sort of veered that way? Yeah, it's, it's, I suppose that it just with my influences and just subconsciously when I'm writing, it seems to be, um, seems to be more on the countryside. Well, it's, it's lovely sounding music, it's nice sounding songs as well, you know, it's like you can really, you can hear in it that you're enjoying yourself as well, you know, and that you've put meaning oh, into it. Thank you very much, Tara, I really appreciate it. It means a lot for somebody to, to say that and notice that, thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome, I could hear it as well, because I was like, I had it on full blast before I was, before you came on, listening yeah. away to, to your summertime song, and it's really good. Thank you so much. And I've seen then that you, you've gone around quite a lot. I mean, you've gone around America and all around the UK and everything. You're gigging all the time. Yeah, I have. I mean, well, not as much in the last uh, 18 months. But, no. um, yeah, um, I've, you know, I've been over to New York, Las Vegas, um, over to Paris, Berlin, um, Amsterdam. Um, I was all around the UK. I did the, I don't know if you've ever heard of the coffee house sessions. No, I haven't heard of them. So I did, I did a tour with them, it was all UK universities, so I did a lot of kind of universities and stuff I'd never ever heard of and met a lot of really interesting people, so that was quite cool. Um, so yeah, kind of all over, um, Estonia, I've done a few gigs in Estonia, um, yeah, it's plenty more places to go, Nashville is next on the list. I was just about to say that, have you, have you not been there yet? No, you haven't got there yet. Not yet. It's, um, it's top of the list, and um, I know my management are pushing. As soon as I'm able to go, I'm, I'm going to be going. Country music is so relatable. Um, yeah. it's, it's a very sort of blue collar, working class thing. You know, it, you can relate to, you know, having a barbecue or you know having a drink with friends. I think that's the one thing when I was writing "Summertime Soul." It was you know almost trying to find the simplicity in it. Yeah. rather than over overthinking it, trying to find, you know, what is it I'm actually trying to say here and and what makes it, you know, simple and relatable and, you know, to try and get across what I'm actually feeling. So I think, you know, yeah, it's, you're absolutely right. It's, it is one of those those things. Is there anyone you'd like to collaborate with? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I'd love to write with Luke Combs would be one. He's, he's a massive country artist and he's fantastic. He's, I just love the way he writes. And I would also love to write with Ryan Tedder of One Republic, who's right. written <coughs> pretty much, I think he's written almost every big hit in the last uh, 10 years, you know, from Beyonce to Kelly Clarkson to, you know, obviously all the One Republic songs as well. Yeah. Um, Pink and everyone, but he, his writing is just unbelievable. I, I don't know where he, he, he finds all those hooks and everything but those are the two main ones that i'd love to collaborate with got any plans for um for next year for any have you got any festivals or any sort of gigs or anything sorted out for next year yet so nothing yet and the nothing confirmed yet there's lots of stuff in the pipeline and um, my management and my agent are working tirelessly um, at the moment to, to see you know how how much i can actually do and yeah. um, once the album comes out at the start of the year, so hopefully um, Nashville's top of the priority list, um, a few festivals and a couple of tours. So I'm hoping to be very, very busy. Your album is going to be, that's the Past Lives album, yeah? Yeah, Past Lives, yeah. So what inspired yeah. that that, al that um, name of that album? So 
Uh, the, the whole writing process started probably, I started sort of really kind of, I came into sort of a, a weird period in my life, sort of the tail end of 2019. So transpiring into a global pandemic has given me the time and opportunity to sort of reflect on a lot of stuff um, and, and do a lot of writing was, was quite nice to be honest. Um, so I kind of felt like sort of looking back with and dealing with a lot of elephants in the room, um, writing a lot of the songs and getting back to being creative, I realised that how much I'd changed over time and how I'd evolved and, and you know through the things that I'd learned and people I'd spent time with, how I'd evolved from the, the person that I was maybe you know five ten years ago and in various different periods um, that I'd developed into a very different person. So it almost felt like when I was writing about this, these people, I was writing about someone else. Right, I'm with you. So it was yeah. all. So it was almost like, you know, writing about my past lives um, and, and that sort of sense and, and where I've come. And I, I think that's when you write songs like that about your own experiences, it kind of feels like a past life because it's not what you're currently doing. Because I never really sort of write about what I'm doing at the moment, unless, because I always feel as though you're kind of, you're always kind of living um, yeah. in the past anyway. Yeah, but you've got what you're living at the moment, you're not quite ready to write about because you haven't yeah. lived it all fully yet, so it's what yeah. you have lived. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that, that's probably uh, the main thing, and, and that's where that sort of came from. And I just thought, based on the collection of songs that I've got, it, it was a, a very apt title um, yeah. for, for you know where, where I want to go. Have you got any other music at the moment? Are you still writing at the moment? Have you got? <clears throat> so I'm always kind of constantly in. I'm always constantly writing. You know, if I pick up my guitar, there's always an idea, and I'll grab my phone and, and do a little voice memo. And um, the album, the album's pretty much finished. There's just one track we need to sort of finish off. Um, but I'm always kind of, I'm always kind of writing or putting together an idea. There's, there's so many ideas. I mean, I think last year, I think even before lockdown, I sort of went through my phone to see all the ideas that I had yeah. that I'd never ever done anything with. And I think I had maybe 52 ideas. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were just kind of sick. Just all little things. Some of them, I mean, some of them were only one minute long, two minutes long, and it was just a verse and a chorus of something that I kind of made up on the yeah. spot because that's, that's how, kind of how I start with an idea and it's, it's a, a melody and you know some some lyrics that just comes out of sort of perforated vowels and then it gradually sort of maybe evolves depending on, on what I what I take take next. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm always kind of uh, if you're writing and I think being in that uh, that environment like Nashville um, would be would be something that would really sort of enhance that creative process. What sort of music do you listen to though while you're for yourself when you're not writing everything just for you to relax and I mean I, I, I listen to a lot of country music that's probably if you were to open up my Spotify release radar on a weekly basis there's a lot of country in there I love there's an artist called Donovan Woods who is just amazing he is he's just an unbelievable songwriter he's Canadian and he writes in Nashville and things like that he's phenomenal and um. um, in the last well in the last I, I've sort of I'll give you a rundown of songs that I've had on repeat in the last couple of days just because I'm really, really enjoying them. So I've had the live version of The Bartender and the Thief by Stereophonics from oh, okay. Live from Dakota. Um, Katie Musgraves, her new album is just amazing. Uh, if you've not heard it, it's called Starcross. That's oh. a great album. Um, Lady Gaga, Stupid Love. Yeah. I just love the, the 80s vibe of that song. Um, the Only Us cover by Carrie Underwood and Dan and Shea from the Dear Evan Hansen soundtrack. Right. Um, and what have we got else? So it is eclectic, uh, isn't it? Very varied. <laughs> there's, there's, there's even some scooter there as well. Well, you know what? It's been really lovely speaking to you. I've really enjoyed the interview. Thanks ever so much for your time. No, thank you, Tara. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks ever so much, Scott. Thank you, Tara. Take care. Have a great evening. You as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.
Channel R Discover. The best up-and-coming artists are right here.